Hey, I'm Darlene and you're watching a rapid fire art tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you a few ways to give a flat drawing more depth. Go grab a drawing that you want to work on and try some or all of these tips to add an additional layer of depth to it. Let's begin. Tip number one, apply perspective. Perspective is used to give the illusion of depth or distance on a 2D surface. So by applying it properly, you can push areas far away or pull them closer to you, which helps your drawing pop out of the page. If your drawing is a scene or a subject that recedes into the distance, remember that objects should look smaller and smaller as they move further away. To draw a simple scene like this, you can use one point linear perspective to find out the appropriate size to draw each object. Just align your ruler to the edges of your object and line it up to a single point in the distance. Applying perspective properly sets a good foundation for your 3D drawings. Tip number two, blurring. To heighten the illusion of perspective, just apply some blur to sections of your drawing. For example, if you want the viewer to focus their attention on only one apple, let's say this one, you can blur all the others and remove some detail. Simply use a soft tissue to smudge the drawing until it becomes blurred. The further an object is from the main focal point, the more blurry it should be. This is very simple to do, and it helps to heighten the illusion of depth. It makes faraway objects look even further away than they were before, and objects that are close to you look even closer. Here's what it looked like before and after. Now, if you want the viewer to focus their attention on this apple instead, you can blur all the others, leaving only this one looking sharp. Tip number three. Shade more. If your drawings usually have minimal shading and contain mostly white or whatever color your paper is, it's going to be very difficult to make it look 3D. So the first thing you can do is get more comfortable with shading the entire drawing, leaving only the brightest areas white or close to white. If you're not sure how or where to shade, please click over to my shading tutorial before you continue with this one. It covers the topic of light which is crucial for realism. Just click on the link in the top right of this video or in the description. I'll be waiting right here for you when you return. Tip number four, use gradients. A gradient is a gradual transition from light to dark or the other way around. Gradients exist because the further something is from the light or the more it turns away from the light, the darker and darker it appears generally speaking, so even objects with flat sides will display gradual changes in light intensity. Here's an example. For most beginners, drawing a deep crease or wrinkle might look something like this, a set of lines on the surface of the skin. The problem here is that it just looks like a line tattooed onto the skin's surface. Because the shading is a solid value, the skin looks completely flat. In order to curve the skin into a wrinkle, we'll need to make it look as though it's turning away from the light, which means the skin should become darker and darker as it approaches the groove, making the transition from light to dark become gradual instead of abrupt. This gradient forces us to perceive the wrinkle as a curved surface instead of a flat one. So simply using lines to indicate wrinkles, folds, or creases won't do. Try to use gradients wherever possible to give all surfaces a more realistic sense of depth. Tip number five, remove obvious outlines. Any outlines in your drawing can make it appear cartoony which takes away from any effort in making it look 3D, because in real life, there are no outlines, so make sure they're erased or try to blend them into their surroundings until they disappear. Tip number six, make full use of your pencils. So here's an example of a flat drawing. Now this may look familiar to you if you're a very light-handed artist. The shading looks good, but it still looks flat. 
And the reason is because it lacks value contrast, meaning there isn't that big of a difference between light and dark. Everything is just a light shade of gray. Let me pull up a graphite value scale to show you what I mean. As you can see, my graphite pencil is capable of creating really dark values, but in the image below, only a small range is being used, which is kind of a big waste. This makes the eye look really flat. To avoid this, apply a little more pressure while you're shading, or use the same amount of pressure that you're used to, but switch to a softer pencil than the one you're currently using. That should give you a slightly darker value. For example, if you're using an HB pencil, switch to a softer one like a 2B or even a 4B if you want. When you shade with a softer pencil, your drawing should come out looking darker than it normally would. As we expand the value range across the entire drawing, you can see that the eye is starting to take on a more 3D form. So simply shading darker in general will create a more impactful drawing that's much more interesting for your viewer to look at. As I increase the contrast, the drawing becomes clearly a few shades darker than the paper, which really helps to set the drawing apart from the background. I like the level of shading that it has now, but it's still not popping out of the page. So to add more depth, I'm going to look for specific areas across the entire drawing where I can exaggerate or deepen the values without making it look unnatural. This requires some understanding of how light behaves, which I assume you already have since you've watched this far in. If you need a refresher, the shading tutorial is just a click away. Alright, moving on. I'm going to go for areas that are sort of hidden from direct light and reflections. Darkening these areas can push parts of your drawing further into the background. Here are a few examples. Example number one. Darkening crevices and nooks can push them further back, but you do want to make sure it's not overdone. So work in layers, adding more graphite just a little bit at a time. Example number two. Cast shadows, especially ones on dark surfaces, are great areas to exaggerate. You might have noticed a very subtle cast shadow along this section. I'm going to exaggerate the darkest area along it, which happens to be the iris. Now the iris looks deeper, and even though I didn't touch the eyelid at all, it looks as though it's been pulled towards us. If you didn't catch it, here it is again. Example number three. If you're drawing from your imagination, it really helps to understand some basic anatomy. For this example, I know I can shade the pupil much, much darker because it's actually a hole in the center of the iris that absorbs light. So it should appear very dark. It doesn't look like a hole right now, but that'll change as soon as I shade it some more. Not every drawing needs to have dark shades in it. Just do whatever is right for your specific drawing. So it looks like I've covered all the values. You might have noticed that after adding all of these dark shades of gray, the eyelashes and eyebrows look much lighter in comparison to the rest of the drawing, making the entire drawing look rather bland and uninteresting. Now, dark values can create interest, guiding the eyes to look wherever you want them to. So to give the drawing more of a balance, I'm gonna darken the eyelashes and eyebrow as well. That's much better. Now I've made full use of my graphite pencil by including all the shades it can possibly create. Of course, you don't have to use all the values in the scale, but it does make the drawing look a lot more interesting. So we're done, right? Not exactly. We traveled far to the right of the scale, but there's still another value on the left, and that's white. If your drawing contains a lot of white areas already, this might not be very impactful. Okay, so here are a few areas that could use some brightening. These shiny wet surfaces reflect a lot of light, so turning them white or close to white will make them pop immediately. For this step, you can use an eraser or correction fluid. If your drawing doesn't have any wet or shiny surfaces, just brighten your highlights further. Use your dark and light values to push and pull your drawing further. 
When you do this, it helps to know where the light source is coming from, so the lighting makes sense and so it looks convincing. Here's a comparison between the drawing before and after. Leave a comment down below to tell me which tip was your favorite, and share with me your before and after photos. I'd love to see them. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when I post a new one.